All right, hello again. We're doing more sentential derivations here. Uh, we're, we're, this video is going to focus on, again, slideshow <coughs> number 16, uh, section 7. So what I'm going to do here is just a bunch, or not a bunch, maybe four or five examples of uh, direct derivations using those new sentential rules. So you're going to want to have those that sentential rule sheet up with you while we, we work through some of these examples. So no new uh, information presented, just going to give some uh, examples of how to construct these these derivations. All right, so the <clears throat> excuse me. The first example I want to do uh, is going to be the following, and I'm going to just start writing. If I can find my chalk somewhere. No, I cannot. Uh, ah, there we go. Uh, I'm just going to start writing the premises down. I'm not going to write the whole argument across the top as I have been. So the first argument we're going to try to try to derive is the following. Premise one is P by conditional Q or not R. Premise two is R. Premise three is Q. And we're going to try to show, we're going to try to show that this, uh, this supports uh, the conclusion P. So again, we write down that these are our premises. That's why we're allowed to write them down. And we're going to leave the show line open because we don't yet know if we're going to be successful in this proof, although I hope we are. OK, so what do we do first here? So it can look a little confusing. There's nothing we can do with lines 2 or 3, not on their own, um, R and Q. But we do have this OR claim up here in line 1. And so the thing I'd urge you to do is look at your rule sheet and see what the or out rule looks like. And just to remind you, I'll write it over here. Or out says if you've got A or B and you've got the negation of B, you can get A. So we've got our A and our B with an or. If we had the negation of our B, we could get the A out of it. We could get this part out of it. We don't actually have the negation of this because the negation of not R is right over here, not not R. And we don't have not not R. However, we do have R and we have a rule DN, double negation, that allows us to get not not R. So that's going to be our first move. I'm going to write not not R on line 5, and that comes from line 2 by dn, our double negation rule that says you can always add two negations to the front of any formula you have. Now I've got something that's got the right form that I can apply my or out rule. So that's what I'm going to do. So we get p if and only if q, that is p by conditional q. I've left the parentheses off because they don't matter anymore once it's by itself. And that comes from 1 and 5 by our OR OUT rule. OK, this is good. We're making progress here. We've got a biconditional P if and only if Q. And we're trying to get P. What do we have left? We've got this Q formula here left. So we're going to have to figure out how to break down this formula in order to get P. Now our rule, our biconditional out rule, says we can either get P arrow Q or we can get Q arrow P. In this case, we're going to want to get Q arrow P. And that's because that's the right thing we need to be able to use Q to get P. If that doesn't make sense, pause the video and go look at our rule sheet for arrow out and you'll see that that's the case. But first, let's talk about where we get this from. This comes from line 6 by our biconditional out rule. And again, note something that we mentioned in the last video. By conditional out only has one ingredient, so there's only one line cited here. Or out has two ingredients, and so there's two lines cited here. Now we're almost ready to finish our proof here. We've got Q arrow P and we've got Q, so arrow out tells us that we can derive P. So that comes from lines 3 and 7 by arrow out. Now we're essentially done. We just need to cancel our show line, write DD for direct derivation, 
and box everything that comes underneath the canceled show line. So there we go. There's a proof that these four, uh, sorry, these three premises uh, validly allow you to conclude P. Okay, let's move on to a different example. Okay, this one's going to be a little bit longer uh, and allow us to see some other rules that we, we haven't seen yet. So the first premise for this is S arrow T and U or W. The next premise is not T. Third premise is not U. Fourth premise <coughs> is if not S and, make sure I get this right, W, then K, and we're going to try to show K. So we note that these are our premises, and now we can get started with trying to finish this derivation. So let's think how to proceed here. <clears throat> we're trying to show K. The only place K shows up is in line four here, a premise four, and it's at the back end of an arrow. So if we look at our rules, we can see the way we're probably going to finish this proof is by getting not S and W and doing arrow out to get K. So our sort of our, our intermediate step is to try to get not S and W. And so looking up at my premises, I notice that S is here and W is here. So maybe I ought to break these down and then try to go about getting not S and W. That's going to be my kind of strategy. If that doesn't make sense, maybe pause the video and think through how this proof is going to proceed. Okay, so we want to break down line one first, and we can because the connective is an and. An and out tells us we can take both of these halves by themselves. <coughs> so I'm going to do that. S arrow T <coughs> comes from line one by and out. And similarly, similarly, <laughs> U or W comes from line one by and out. If you're wondering why the parentheses are gone, it's because the parentheses aren't needed once they're broken down. The parentheses only tell us that that's the main connective. Once we've broken them down, parentheses don't matter. So we just we leave them off for convenience. OK, so now we've got S R O T and U or W. And we've got lines two and three here. And we can use some of our rules to get at the things we want. Look at S arrow T and not T. If you look at the modus tollens version of arrow out, you'll see that that allows us to write down not S, the negation of the antecedent. That comes from line two and six by arrow out. What about U or W? Well, we've got U or W, and we know that not U. So or out tells us we can conclude W. That comes from line 3 and 7 by or out. Now we're really close to finishing the proof. We know that if we had this, we could apply arrow out to get K. We don't quite have that yet, but we've got its building blocks. We've got not S and we've got W, and and in tells us we can put them together. So we write down not S and W from 8 and 9 by and in. And now we've got the antecedent of the conditional. And arrow out tells us we can get K, the consequent. And that comes from line 4 and 10. By arrow out. So now we just have to finish up our proof. We cancel our show line, DD for direct derivation, and then put a box around everything underneath that canceled show line. So there's our second example here. I want to do two more examples uh, before we finish this video off. All right.
the first one's going to look, or sorry, the second to last example, the, our third example here, it's going to look a little bit odd. But I think going through it illustrates something good about our, or something useful about our, our system here. So here's the argument I want us to consider. It's got premise P and Q. And its conclusion is Q and P. So this is kind of an absurd argument. Of course, we all know that if P and Q is true, Q and P is true. But let's think through how we actually derive this, how we prove this, how, if you like, a computer program that didn't understand what these meant would be able to get from here to here using our rules. Here's how we do that. We say, well, if P and Q is true, then we know P is true. That comes from line 1 by and out. If P and Q is true, we know that Q is true. That comes from line 1 by and out. And now and in tells us you can take these two and put them together in any order you want with an and. So we say, OK, Q and P from 3 and 4 by and in. And then we cancel box and write down direct derivation. I think this proof is useful to look. This derivation is useful to look at um, because it shows us that even though it's obvious to us that this and this are really just the same formula, to demonstrate it in our system, we still have to go through the steps to show how you get sort of from here to here. Okay. One more example we'll do, uh, and then we'll be, be done with this video. All right, for this argument, we're going to start off with premise one that says P and not Q. Premise two says Q or PRLS. Premise three says R and T, if and only if S. And I believe we're trying to derive P and R. So that's our conclusion, P and R. So let's see how we can do this. So <clears throat> again, let's think sort of strategically before we attack it. We're trying to show P and R. That's got two parts, P and R. And we know from and in, if we can get P by itself and we can get R by itself, we can put them together and finish up our proof. So I think our strategy here should be to try to first get P and then try to get R. And then if we do that, we can put them together and finish our proof. OK, hopefully it's pretty clear to you how we're going to get P. Line 1 says P and not Q. And out tells us we can get P by itself. 1, and out. And we're halfway there. We've got P. Now we've got to figure out how we're going to get R. And this is going to be a little bit more complicated. Let me sort of talk you through how I think about this. And this wouldn't be obvious to you until you do a lot of practice problems. But let's just talk through the basic strategy. And then we'll execute that strategy and see how it works. Now here's the strategy. I see R over here. I know that if I could get R and T, I could get R by itself. So how do I get this? Well, this is a biconditional. So I could get if S, then this. So I need to figure out how to get S. How do I get S? Well, I've got P already. And I've got P or OS here. So I could get S as long as I could get this broken down away from this OR claim. So I need to get this P or OS by itself. How do I do that? I've got to have not Q. Well, I've got not Q here. So I can get that and then work all the way my way to getting R. I might have gone a little fast, but I'm going to walk through it now step by step so you can see how we do it. OK, first we're going to get not Q from line 1 also by and out. Now that I've got not q, I can get this p arrow s by itself by or out. That is, I know a or b. I know not a. So I can get my b formula. In this case, p arrow s from one, uh, sorry, 2 and 6 by or out.
Now if you look at 5 and 7, you can see we've got something of the right form to apply arrow out, so we're going to get s from 5 and 7 by arrow out. And this is useful because, remember the by conditional lets us get an arrow going either direction. We can either get if r and t then s, or if s then r and t. We're going to take that second one because it's going to be most useful to us. So we're going to write down line 9 here, and s arrow r and t from line 3 by our by conditional out rule. Now if you look at 8 and 9, I hope you can see that our arrow out rule applies again. We've got s and we've got s arrow r and t, so we can get r and t by themselves. That's from 8 and 9 by arrow out. And we're almost done. Remember we want to get r by itself so we can put it together with p. Can we get r by itself? Sure. We've got r and t and our and out rule tells us we can get r by itself from line 10 by and out. I've almost run out of board, but we've just got one more line left, so uh, we can finish our proof. We've got P here in line 5. We've got R down here in line 11. And AND IN tells us we can put those together. So we're going to get P and R from line 5 and 11 by AND IN. That's what we were trying to show. So we cancel our show line, we write DD for direct derivation, and then we box all of this stuff underneath the canceled show line. All right, so if that was confusing, I urge you to go back and watch it and sort of pause after each step and kind of make sure you can convince yourself that you understand where each, each line came from. I also really, really, really <coughs> urge you to do some practice problems. There's a ton of practice problems in the online, the free online book that also have answers. And I think the more you sort of work with these rules, the more you work through some problems, uh, the easier it's going to become to see sort of how they proceed. And of course, let me know if you have any questions.